What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hicker Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Click this little subscribe button up here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys will be notified every time we upload new content. Now in today's video, we're going out to do another search and recovery dive, but before we do that, we have got to pick out a lot. And I've got a slew of lots here behind me to actually choose from. And I thought it would be cool to make a video on why I choose a thousand loom light. Because I've got a ton of lights here. I've got a 3800 loom light. I've got another 2000 loom light. I've got a 2100 loom light here. I've got a ton of lights to choose from. I've even got some lower loom lights around 800 and even got some around the 400 looms. But I'm going to show you in a video of why I feel that the thousand loom light is going to be the best go-to uh, uh, brightness for you as a diver. Now, no, it's not going to be the best in every situation, but for search and recovery dives where we dive a lot, where we have a lot of turbid water, we're going to kind of go through and show you why that thousand loom light is going to be the best light for that if you find yourself in a limited visibility uh, situation. But let's run through the lights that I've got here to choose from and I'll kind of explain why I'm choosing the light that I'm choosing. And then I'm actually going to take you on this search and recovery dive with actually two lights. I'm going to take one of the most powerful lights I've got and I'm going to take a mid-grade power light which is around that thousand looms and we're going to see how they hold up. And then I'll give you some final thoughts towards the end of the video as well on where you can pick up some of these lights. All right, guys, just a quick run through. You can see I've got a slew of lights to uh, choose from. I've got several of the Mario's XRs that I wear on a cave helmet. I've got a 2100 uh, Orca torch here. I've got a 2000 Oda Pro here. I've got a 1600 um, X-Tar here. I've got two of my little powerhouses that I wear on my full face mask. Uh, these would actually be very well for the search that I'm going to do today, with the exception of I'm not going to be wearing a full face mask. So I probably won't be taking them. But I'm actually going to be taking my Landon C, which is a thousand loom light, and I'm going to be taking the Dive Master model from Comfort Zone as well. Both of these are Comfort Zone models, and this is a 3800 loom light. So I'm going to have about a thousand, about a mid grade light and I'm going to have a pretty powerful light of 3,800 looms. Um, my canister light's not really needed, but it's only around 2,000. Then I've got a couple extra backups, a couple extra video lights. And I do want you guys to stay tuned in the future because several of these lights, like this Orca Torch here, the um, Oda Pro light, and the X-Tar light, I've got another Orca Torch I'll be testing as well. And we're going to be doing some giveaways with these lights as well after we make test videos with them. So stay tuned in the future for that as well. But with that being said, I've got to get up the lake. I'm going to go ahead and take the um, Dive Master light here, which is the 3800 looms, and I'm going to be taking the Land and Sea model, which is a thousand loom lights, and we're going to go jump in and see which one does better in turbid water. All right, guys, so before we actually go underwater here, I want to do two things. One, like I said, this is going to be um, kind of an explanation of why I choose such a low lumen light. <laughs> But I'm also going to kind of be guiding you on how we're going to conduct this search because originally we had this search set up uh, for a circle search technique. So I've got a line that's dropped down, which we'll go down on, and then I was going to have a diver kind of pivot as I swam around and did a circle search. But I want to talk about what to do when you have a lot of debris in the area because that's exactly what you're going to see here. As we come down this line and we get to that 30 foot mark, you're going to see that there is a ton of debris down here and trying to do any type of of a line search whatsoever, whether it's a uh, circle search or just using a line to go out to explore, is virtually going to be impossible. There's just way too many 
entanglement hazards to even do that. So I'm going to kind of explain what it is I'm doing as I'm down here looking um, for a lady's cell phone, which is what we're actually going off here. Now, I do want to talk about overhead environments um, and dark situations. This is kind of a double overhead environment because we have the dock system and we have boats that's inside the dock system. Um, and we're not going to have a direct ascent here. Yes, we can come back up the line, but obviously there's a boat there. Um, and a cool little thing to note here, this dock system actually moves. So um, we've got a lot of stuff kind of working against us here. We have no ambient light whatsoever. We're having to work with lights. But as we hit down to the 30 foot mark, you'll see it is just absolutely cluttered with debris down here. Now, most of these trees were put in by fishermen who fish this area a lot so that they can create structures and things like that for the fish. But we've got to search through this. Um, so you'll notice that just like we did in a previous video, um, I'm basically inverted. I'm literally upside down. My fins are straight up you know above me um, and I'm just kind of circling around now at this point is when I realize yeah there's no chance whatsoever we're going to be able to do any type of line searches or circle searches so I just pretty much we're doing what I call a free-for-all search and basically I'm just going to pick a uh, general area and I'm going to kind of bounce around now by bouncing around I'm not actually touching the bottom I'm going to be touching the structures that are down there um, this is going to stir it up a little bit but as long as I don't move those structures I'm not making it too bad for me not to see. Um, but what I want you to focus on is as I'm looking down through these branches and all these trees, I'm going to be using two different lights. The light on my left hand, that is the Comfort Zone Scuba Land and Sea, and it's coming in around the 1000 loom mark, which is kind of that sweet spot for me. It's a good bright light, but it's not too much that it's just going to white everything out while I'm down there. And you can see the turbidity in the water here. You can imagine anything brighter than what I actually have is just going to be white out. I'm not going to really be able to see anything. Now here in a minute the light you see on the right will become my primary search light because I want to show you what a 3800 loom light does and you can see there just by it being on the bottom it literally whites everything out and if there's any turbidity whatsoever which you, you can clearly see here on camera I can't see past that turbidity because that bright light is literally just reflecting right back in my eyes. So you can see the brighter the light is not going to be that good of a search light when you're in a limited visibility situation. Um, now if I'm in an open water environment where it's really clear or I really need to reach out and touch something, then yeah, that bright light's going to come in handy. Now the light that you're seeing there, that 3800 loom light, that is the Dive Master model from Comfort Zone Scuba, so it's the exact same company as the light that's on my left. They're both Comfort Zone Scuba. Uh, if you can't tell from most of our videos, we absolutely love their lights. But I just want to show you the difference between a thousand loom light in a limited visibility situation and a uh, 3800 loom light in a limited visibility. As you can see it's just pure white out there. It touches the bottom, it whites out. Every time I touch and like one of those trees or something there and I'm just kind of bouncing along because I don't want to get entangled down in there. It just stirs up that turbidity to the point that that 3800 loom light is doing absolutely nothing for me. Now here in a minute I'll switch back over to the thousand loom light and you'll see not only does it actually cut through the turbidity but when I shine it down through all the tree branches I don't have the shadow effect. So if I'm in a, a really uh, say congested area right here as you see the 3800 loom light it shines on the branches and it creates a lot of shadows up underneath them which kind of defeats the purpose of having that light but when I do switch back over to the thousand loom light you'll see it will cut through those branches and there as you can see I bring it back into the uh, screen there you can see it'll cut through those branches and it'll allow me to see exactly what I need it to see without it causing all the shadows so as I uh, cut back over to my left here in just a second, you'll notice I'll start using the uh, thousand loom light, which is the land and sea model from Comfort Zone, and you can actually see a lot better. You don't have all that that wide out that that 3800 looms uh, causes. The other cool thing about uh, lower lumen lights, um, they actually have a little bit longer run time, so they're not as bright. You're not going to run your batteries down quite as much. The uh, land and sea model is going to run for about four hours uh, on its high setting and then 
course, the dive master model is a lot less than that. It's about an hour and a half to two hours on that 3800 looms. Now, both of these, uh, the dive master model has rechargeable batteries. The Land and Sea model, of course, just takes three AA batteries. But here, I'm going to actually switch back over to the Land and Sea just briefly, and we'll actually come across the phone that we're looking for. Um, but I just wanted you guys to see the difference between a very, very high lumen light and a thousand loom light. Now, a lot of times when we do these searches, I'll have a helmet on, and the lights that I use on that helmet, which are the Mares backup lights, they're only 800 looms. Um, and the full face mask lights that I use, they too are only 800 looms. So it's well within that, that threshold that I like. I still think the thousand loom light is the perfect light to go to uh, for search and recovery in limited vis. It's going to give you the right amount of punch to cut through a lot of stuff, but not too much. It's going to white out. But here you can see I'm actually coming across the phone that I was looking for. This was the iPhone 12 that the lady dropped. And she's got a pretty unique case on it because it keeps her credit cards and all that in there as well. Um, but here in a minute, I'm actually going to stop the camera because it was pretty cool. This this phone's been down there for a few days now. It's still working. It's at 30 foot, which is absolutely phenomenal. The last phone we went after that my daughter found, that was a uh, iPhone 12. And, of course, I personally carry an iPhone 12 now as well. And it's cool to know that at 30 feet after two days that it's still sealed. But I'm going to pause the video here. I want you to read the message. This is 30 foot deep on an iPhone 12. You can see the battery indicator up there that uh, it is about to run out of battery. But I want you to look at the message that came up on this uh, lady's phone when we picked it up. It says, Moment, today is a great day to tackle your someday list. And this this message is absolutely phenomenal. I know we have a ton of viewers and subscribers here on our channel that you guys comment, hey, I really love what you do and I really want to get into scuba diving. It's something I've always wanted to do and one day I'm going to do it. I'm going to meet that bucket list item. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now, guys, today is a great day to tackle your someday list. Go by your local uh, SSI training center, sign up for an open water class. If you're still not sure that you're gonna like it, sign up for a tri scuba class. And guys, I'm telling you, scuba diving is a life changing event. It affects us all and Guys, I've made a very, very, uh, or I've had a very successful career in this, and if it's something that you think you would like to do, please don't wait any longer. Get signed up for a class and join the scuba family. Um, it's great for families in general to do, you know, parents and kids or spouses. This is something that you can share, and, it, you know, we're, we're a select few people that get to see the other 75% of the world. So sign up today. Don't wait too long. But now that we got the phone, we're actually going to come on back up to the surface and uh, give the lady her phone back. But I just wanted to show you that little message. And I really hope you did enjoy this video. I hope you understand that the lights and stuff that we use, we use for a very specific purpose. Um, but when you're searching in limited visibility like this, you don't need a very bright light. Well, we're going to come on up to the surface, hand the lady her phone back, and then, of course, I'm going to give you some final thoughts here at the end as well. And then I'll put you some links down below where you can actually get these lights for yourself. your phone but I did find this one so that's got my driver's license in it <laughs> no you're good there you go sweetie all right don't touch it don't change the volume don't plug it up take it straight home put it in a bag of rice for 24 hours and it's probably going to be safe so guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I also hope you understand that picking the right light can be difficult, especially if you're diving in turbid water versus clear water. What I would suggest is stopping by your local dive center and see what lights they have to offer and check with local divers as well. See what they're using in that general area and that's going to help you make a more informed decision. If you're interested in any of the lights that you've seen in this video, the ones that we actually sell here at the shop will be on our online store. I'll drop a link down below. You can simply 
click on the link and purchase a lot. I do want you to stay tuned in the future because we are going to be reviewing a lot of the lots that you saw in this video and we will be giving them away as well. To give away, all you got to do is simply be a subscriber, like the future videos, and definitely comment on them. But guys, if you like the video, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it as well. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.